What's up, world? Welcome to a new episode of Shots of Brown. It's yours truly, your host, Shane Brown. I got my little cousin here, man, Landon Brown. What's going on, cuzzo? I'm chilling, man. I'm chilling. Just enjoying the company. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How's your day going, man? Day's going good. Day's going good. You know what I'm saying? Can't complain. I feel like I'm I feel like I'm living the dream. Yes, sir. All right. So you know, cuz um, we just gonna have a you know a casual conversation like we do. And I had a uh, few questions, you know, we'll go back in memory lane so on, a few, on a few things. Um, so first off, first question I had for you okay. was uh, not even a question, but give me one of your favorite family memories that, that come to mind. Whatever the first thing that comes to mind. First thing that comes to mind is uh, <clears throat> the Ninja Turtles showing up uh, to my birthday in Atlanta. Yeah, <laughs> that was dope. Damn, cause what uh, what birthday was that? I remember they came to the they came to the uh, mansion. I want to say that was my maybe that might have been my seventh eighth birthday. Right. So, uh, one of those, and Uncle Uncle Tommy dressed up as Batman. <laughs> like, not Batman. He was like, "Yes, I am." <laughs> I was like, "No, you're Uncle Tommy." <laughs> like, I'll be right back. <laughs> oh no, no, it was the other way around. Party, party, party. It was my dad that dressed up like Batman, and I was like, "You're daddy. You're not Batman." And he was like, "I'll be right back." <laughs> in the house, switched with Uncle Tommy, and he came back. And was like, "Here I am. Look, Batman's over there." And I saw Tommy's <laughs> big ass mustache. And I was like, that's Uncle Tommy. <laughs> Uncle, T, Uncle, Uncle T's damn uh, cop mustache. The big old sheriff, Canadian <laughs> sheriff mustache, but he, um, <laughs> the Mountie mustache. Um, but the Ninja Turtles he had come through, those were the Ninja Turtles from the tour. Oh, those yeah. The, the no, those Ninja Turtles was official. Yeah, those were the legit, from the movie, the animatronic, the eyes was blinking, and, like, it was, those were the legit Ninja Turtles, you know? Right, they, they definitely were. Yeah, that's probably one of my one of my favorite family memories. Memories, uh, one of them. Okay. Yeah, that was definitely um, that was definitely one a good one. I remember that. I definitely remember that one. All right, so how was it, man? Um, everybody knows you want a new show, uh, Bobby Brown. Every little step. How how was it? How was it filming it? Uh, you know, it was interesting, man. It was nice to get to spend time with my family like that. You know, I got to. Oh, learn some new stuff about my dad that I didn't know previously. Like, like you know, I I never knew what my father's favorite song was. I never knew that. I never asked him these kind of things. It just didn't come up. You know, it just it just never came up. I never really had an interest in those things with him. Um, but I, I got I got to know him a lot more, and we got to chill. My brother Cassius and I got to kick it, and right. my sisters. So it was it was a good experience in that regard. But filming is filming is annoying, man. You know, it's all about somebody else's time and what everybody else wants you to do. It's 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 very stressful, man. It's very stressful. Right. So you ain't, you you didn't really enjoy the the filming aspect of it too much. Right. I love that I got to spend the time with my family, but the filming part, <clears throat> the filming part sucks. Right. Right. So as far as the uh, as far as the music, man, how's everything? Um, what you got going? As far as with the the music now, you know, everybody's seen the show and seen you was doing your your music thing. We see that you you toured with Uncle B. Um, so where you stand with the music now? Well, when it comes to music, man, what I was trying to, what I've been trying to accomplish is finding my sound, you know, finding what, what I feel like reflects the message that I want to convey, the way I want to convey it. <clears throat> but a really good friend of mine said, he was like, you know what, that's a great idea. It's a great idea to find your sound, but in the meantime, you could be recording every song possible and helping other people with their music or getting songs placed on TV and movies and movies, you know what I'm saying? So now my whole my whole thing with music has changed where I'm not just looking for my sound, but I'm recording everything that I can possibly record just to, to make sure that I have product. Right. So have you been in the have you been in the studio as of late? Yeah, I gotta send you, I gotta send you one I just I didn't sing the last one I did. The last one I, I did, I wrote with my friend, uh, Ye. 
we wrote this song. I think you'll like it. So okay. I'll send you that so you can so you can check it out. But I'm just okay. trying to knock out every song I can possibly knock out. Right. So how was it? How was um? How was the touring? How was the touring with your dad? You know, touring was okay, man. But you know, touring was okay. I got to spend more time with my pops. I got to learn more about the ins and outs of being on being uh, in a performance like that because I I had never really been in a performance like that. You know what I mean? So seeing seeing how the small intricacies and and how people work together, shit is mind blowing, man. And you really have to kind of be a bully sometimes, you know, because because not everybody's a professional. You know what right. I mean, not everybody's a professional in their work ethic. They right. can know what to do, but that doesn't mean that they're going to do it. So I saw a lot of different performers. Like I got to watch Keith Sweat. I got to watch uh, Anthony Anthony Hamilton. I got to watch uh, um, El DeBarge. Like I got to watch all these performers in their different ways of getting, getting their show started. Some of them had a crew of people that already knew what to do. Some right. of them had to be on stage for three hours making sure it sounded right because it didn't sound right. And they were right. Right. You know what I mean? And and a lot of those times you're the person sitting in the audience or sitting backstage waiting for the performer to hurry up and get his sound check over so that you could do your sound check. So you're just sitting around doing a bunch of nothing, you know, right. waiting for your sound check. It's it it's complicated, man. It's it's right. complicated. So what do you prefer? What do you what do you, what do you like better? The touring or the recording? Um that's tough because I feel like there are two sides of the same coin. You know what I mean? Like, like recording the music, you're recording the music for a purpose. Either you're recording the music so that you can have it placed on something and you just stay behind the scenes, or you're recording the music so that you can tour. You know what I mean? And, and I want to do both. I want to record the music so I can get it placed on, on uh, you know, movies and television. And, and I also want to tour with my own people, doing my own shit. Right. You know what I mean? But you, know, you can do a million songs and all of them could suck. You know what I mean? You right. can do a billion songs and only one of them a hit. Right. You know, so you got to just keep on knocking them out, which makes it almost not as fun as being on tour. You see what I'm saying? Right. You can get on tour and and be fucking annoyed at everything everyone's doing because they're just doing whatever they want to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Instead of instead of being driven towards the goal of make sure this performance goes off without a hitch. Um, <clears throat> but then you could also be in the studio knocking out a bunch of weak records you know what i mean right. and you think everyone's the one until you hear it back and you're like fuck this isn't it right right it's gotta be hotter than this so they both have their pros and cons you know what i mean it, it right. works both ways but i love i love them both right when you get on stage you get to see those lights <clears throat> and all the people and man it's it's uplifting it's like you got a super mario star right and then when you're recording and you record that one fucking song that's like Mm, this is hot. This is fire right here. You know what I mean? Right. So they both have their pros and cons. Yeah, well, I don't know if you've seen the uh, first episode of the um, of the podcast, but I did a review. I, I talked about the episode that uh, my mother was on. No, I didn't, I didn't see it. Right. Well, you know, um, I just spoke my piece on the episode, um, cause you know, we felt that was my first time hearing anything about my mother's sickness. Yeah, yeah, um, you and that's wild. You know, we had that's the it. we had the conversation. Um, I spoke on it. I spoke on what I didn't like from everybody's aspect, from my mother to Uncle B, your father to Alicia. Um, when you get a second, you can check it out. Uh, yeah, I'll check it out. I'll watch it. There's a lot of people who commented and everybody's gonna somebody's gonna comment on something. Yeah, every you're right. Everyone's gonna love what you're saying and everyone's gonna hate what you're saying. And just it's a mixed bag. You never know. Right, right. <laughs> of course, matter. you know, we've been dealing with it our whole life, of course. Yeah. There's uh people on there who love it and there's people on there who hate it. But like I always say, you know, either way, you're entitled to your own opinion. So either Whatever you choose, whatever side you choose, I, it, it doesn't bother me. Right, exactly. I'm, I'm going to speak my truth, and that's just going to be that. Right. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing anyway. Right. <laughs> so being, um, you know, we both come from uh, 
having parents who struggled with addiction. How was that for you growing up? Uh, you know, <laughs> what's interesting is the first person to bring, you know, bring the light to my eyes about this was you. You were the first person to tell me. I tell you what, as far as what? I didn't know my dad was on drugs. Oh, you you never knew? I didn't. Hear, but hear, hear this, though. This is what's crazy. Think about being a little kid, watching watching your dad do wild things. But you don't know he's on drugs. I thought that's just who he was. I was like, wow. <laughs> Whoa. This is outrageous. Then, but, so how old was you, cuz, when I told you that? Damn. Oh, shit, man. I might have been... I might, I might have been like 11, maybe. 11 yeah. or 12. And you were like, you didn't know your dad's doing drugs? And I was like, he is not doing drugs. And you were like, Landon, he's <laughs> doing drugs. <laughs> Damn, because I, like, I was like, you know, he's not doing drugs. But then it hit me. Everything that I had seen, I was like, oh, snap. That was drugs. Right. <laughs> I saw him. I was like, oh, like, oh snap. I, damn. I was wondering what that shit was. Damn, because you know? I'm sorry that I did. Uh, no, was... no, 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 no. You you gave me perspective. When you told me that, you gave me a truth that opened my eyes to a different part of the world. I think that I would have been worse off had I just thought the crazy shit that this man was doing was exactly who this person who, is. Who he was, right. Yeah, I think that would have messed me up more. If right. I thought right. this is just who he is and there's, it's never, ever going to change. Right. Never. Right. I mean, not that he's under the influence of something. He's acting this way because he's under the influence of something. Right. You know, so you, you, you changed my mind about a lot of things. It wasn't a bad thing, though. Damn, that's crazy. My fault that I, that I had to. Uh... You should stop saying my fault. It was a good no, thing. Because I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel uh, bad about that because I just knew how I felt, you know, about my mother when i finally realized she was on drugs it fucked me i didn't up. know she was on drugs either <laughs> dude they all was they all was I, I didn't know anybody was doing drugs <laughs> and i was like what in the hell is going on around here right it's crazy you because you know the kind of situations we've been in man where it was right. like we should not be here right right Shit that shit that children should not have had to been witness to. You know what I mean? Like right. a lot of crazy times, man. But I I didn't know that it was because somebody was under the influence of something that changed everything. Right. So how how was it? How was it for you uh, going to school with everybody knowing that you who you are and uh, dealing with your dad being in the media and the tabloids all all the time about all the wow. wild shit. Man, you, you just have to build thick skin because kids are mean. Kids are honest, brutally honest, and they're they're mean. So you just have to build thick skin, man, because somebody's going to make a joke. Somebody's going to make a joke on top of that joke, and now you're the guy who everybody gets to tell jokes about because it's the thing to do, right? right? One person sees somebody else telling jokes about you. Then they see another person telling jokes about you. Now they're like, oh, this is the guy we tell jokes about. Okay. Right. But then I ended up being uh, very physical in school. I ended up fighting, fighting a lot of people. Right. I got kicked out of a lot of schools. I went. I think I went to like six different high schools because I was I was over it. I was like, as soon as somebody starts telling jokes, I got to make an example about uh, of them because I'm not about this shit. Right. Y'all not about to bully me. We'll show y'all what's up. <laughs> right. Oh. Yeah, cuz yeah, I uh I went through the same shit. My fault I was had to respond to a text. Okay. Yeah, but I went through the same shit, man, with um, you know, going through my school years with everybody knowing, you know, that's Bobby Brown's nephew. You know, people used to come to Ma's house and see all see all the awards in Ma's house and put two and two together and yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, so uh shit used to be crazy. So give me um yeah, man, give me one rest in peace to 
Yeah, brother and sister, my cousins, um, Lord Bobby and Bobby Chris, give me one good story, a happy story, man, that you can remember with uh, with them both. Let's start off with um, uh, Chrissy first. A good memory with Chrissy. Um, first thing that comes to mind is when I was like, hey, you want to go get some ice cream? And she was like, I guess. She had a real smart ass mouth. And I was trying to bond with her because she was in this place where she was just fucking rude and just just snappy and mean. And I was like, all right, you're her big brother. You got to buckle down. This is some normal teenager shit. You got to buckle down and you got to figure out how to have a relationship with this motherfucker. So I was like, all right, cool. You want to go get some ice cream? She was like, ice cream. Fine. And I was like, cool, cool. <laughs> so we hopped in a Porsche truck and I pulled into this big parking lot and I was like, you ready to drive? She was like, what? And I was like, yeah, we're about to let you drive today. And she was like, oh, my God. So she got in the driver's seat, and she was all over that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, now, turn the steering wheel like this. Let's do a, a slide. And, man, we, was, we were acting crazy in that car. She stopped the car. She said, I love you so much. And I was, I was hyped, man, because I felt like I, I, I made a breakthrough. Right. I was hyped. And now that oh, was y'all yeah. bonded. Yeah, that's that's just one of the good memories I come up with. I got I, I have a, I, have a I know you got them. many, right? Right. Yeah. I, after that, we ended up we ended up having a lot of a lot of good situations, a lot of good times. Right. Uh, with Bobby, <sighs> Bobby and I got to spend a lot a lot more time together because we were on the same coast for a long time. So we got to spend a lot more time together. If I had to pick one time that we had a super ton of fun man we had so much fun so many places fun to pick one um we were <laughs> i got a video of it too we were at a bar together right and it was some it was some random dive bar with like a rock band behind us we were just like let's just get turned up tonight so we were just in there getting lit together and we were just talking to girls and we were we were having so much fun. And I was like, we should call dad and see if he wants to come. And he was like, oh, yeah, call him. So we were trying to FaceTime him and he didn't pick up. So I was like, yo, this dude just didn't pick up the call. We called like six times and answered the phone. We're like, we're over this shit. So I was like, yo, let's record a video for him. So we recorded a video and I was like, hey, man, we just tried to call you. You didn't answer, man. You're weak as fuck. <laughs> and Bobby was like, weak as fuck. And I was like, weak as fuck, man. You're weak as fuck. Hold on, 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 I got it right here, hold on, hold on. You got the video? I got the video right here. Like, if I if I just tell you what it was like, it, it's not good enough. Damn, man. Hey, man, sometimes it just... It, it just it, it just still seems so unreal to me cuz yeah i know sometimes i i feel like i can call him and then i, I realize i can't call him and i'm like right and there's some songs there's some songs that will come on my wife knows my wife would be like do you need me to turn this off because she knows that it'll trigger some shit and i'll i'll just fall out man i'll just have my whole right. day of bad my whole day hey cuz i got a uh Crazy funny memory with Lil Bobby, right? Well, so you know he had came and um he had came down here and stayed with me for like a couple of months at my, at the crib. We was at the crib. We was just having a good ass time, man. And one day, me and him had went. We had woke up and went to Myrtle Beach. And we had stayed down there for like four, like four or five days. We're on the beach, cause and we get wasted. We're fucking drunk as hell. <laughs> And you know, Lil B, his drink, his favorite drink was that Jameson. Yeah. So he had went, you know, that's what he's drinking. And I had lost him. We was walking down Ocean Drive together and, and I turned around and he was gone, but he was talking to this girl in the street. By the time I turned around, he was gone. So I get to asking everybody like, hey, yo, did y'all see, um, y'all see my cousin? Like, Y'all seen him? Y'all ain't see the dude that was just with me? They're like, 
No, nah, we ain't seen him. So I'm walking around the damn beach, man, for damn. Because <laughs> I'm walking around the damn beach for a, at least 30, 45 minutes looking for him. I see his ass on the back street, on a, uh, like on a, like one street over from Ocean Drive. He over there with this chick. And he is drunk as hell in the middle of the street. And when he sees me, he's like, yo, cuz. You know how cuz was when he was tipsy. And yo, we, we just had a, it was just a wild night, man. And it was just, um, it was a wild night, bro. It was a wild night. But we had a, ended up leaving there and going to uh, Charlotte with Beaver. Yeah, we had Beaver in a long time. Yeah, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't seen him in a minute either. That, actually, I think that was my last time. No, no, that wasn't my last time seeing him. Um, I seen him again uh, when right after Billy passed. But is yeah, though, man, I miss him. Is I miss still him. alive? Huh? Is Beaver still alive? Yeah, he's still alive. Yeah. Yep, he's still alive. He's I living. I call him. Yeah, he, uh, he's living in um, North Carolina. I got to give him a call. I'll yeah, I got him yeah, I'm gonna I'm send you his number so you can uh, chop it up with him. Yeah, he, he would let it hear from you too. Yeah, he would let it hear from you. Man, talking about my brother is not it's not great. Yeah, I know, I know. So let's uh, all right, let's go, let's get on some, let's get on some uh, some funny shit, man. Give me one funny ass story, man. Do you got any, we got any funny stories together, me and you, that you can think of, man? Look, you and I have the most random stories that we probably can't tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> I remember when uh, when we were kids and um, you lived in this big ass apartment complex, and and you were like, "Oh, we're going to the homie's house," and I was the young one in the group. I was I was the kid in the group. But y'all brought me with you anyways. I was I was hyped, like, oh, they're bringing you with me. This is dope. Let's go. Right. Um, I remember, I can't remember who said something to me, but they cussed at me or something. So I was gonna cuss back at them, but I I had never cussed before. So I was like, man, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, what did you just say? <laughs> I was like, I told him shut the fuck up. <laughs> and I, couldn't, I couldn't say the word because there's just something that you was like. This is bad. You can't cuss, man. You're not All right. This shit couldn't even come out. Man, we went swimming in these public pools. That's like, you know, it's it's crazy the kind of shit that you, like, it's a cultural thing. Like, you heard Denzel Washington say, it's not a race thing. It's a cultural thing, right, where where you don't, you don't understand some shit because of your culture. Y'all don't do this. You know what I'm saying? And, and I feel like, I feel like, you know, being in a, a, a big public pool, Maybe it's not a cultural thing. Maybe I'm tripping. But being in a big color pool with a bunch of little fucking kids in it, it's a million people in this pool. <laughs> right, right. We used to have that, you know what I'm saying? Jumping in pools like that, flying across the country or across the world as a group. Yeah, I remember we was in, I remember us, one thing I can remember, uh, I remember us kids with your dad overseas in Japan. Hmm. Me, you, Kelsey. Um, Hakeem, Jared, yep. Little T. Yep. And we was all on stage. Remember we had the vest and it was uh, the blue and orange striped vest. Yep. Yep. I remember. I remember that crowd looking like. You and you and Kelsey went on, y'all was uh, dancing and shit on stage. Yeah, when Kelsey did the splits and tripped me. Yeah. Oh, he, tri <laughs> he tripped you on the stage? Yeah, he tripped me, man. He did the splits. He was getting his magic mic on, did the splits, and he tripped, tripped the fuck out of me. Right. Um, I, remember, I remember my dad being on stage like, somebody bring my son Landon out on stage. I was asleep in the dressing room. Right. I was in the dressing room, knocked out. They were like, he's looking for you. You know what's crazy is that that hasn't changed. I'll go to one of my dad's shows, and I'll be backstage somewhere, and somebody will run over and be like, your dad has been on stage saying your name for three minutes. And I'm right. like, like, tell me something before the show. Like, don't just, I'm not going to just sit on the side of the stage every single show. Right. I mean, I've seen this a million times. Right, waiting for you to call my name, right. 
Yeah, I'm not gonna sit on the side stage forever. You know what I mean? I'm I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. You know what I'm saying? I got piss. Right. You know? I'm not gonna sit here forever. You got any but, uh any any uh any uh good funny Auntie Whitney stories you would like to share? Hmm. Funny story about her. There was a story in the tabloids when I was younger that um that she was having an affair with some young man and it was a picture of me and we were like what the fuck so she was like first of all i need to make sure everybody knows you're my son second of all you're about to be working every time we come out you're going to be working with the rest of security we're going to show you what to do <laughs> because we're not going to have no none of these mistakes no more right so i started working with her. i started working with her security i had the black shirt on had the pants on, had the flashlight, the walkie-talkie. <laughs> and they were teaching me everything, man. They taught me. Alan taught me everything. Right. Uh, funny, funny stories with her. Um, you know, she was just so sweet to me, man. I don't feel like we had a bunch yeah, of... She oh! She was like, she was like, come here, son. And I was like, what's up? She was like, I just wanted you to know. You know, I see you're hanging out. You're just doing your thing. I set up some studio time for you. I want you to go over there, knock it out. Just do whatever you want, whatever you want. And I was like, oh, my God, thank you. So I, I drove over to the studio, and I did a song about this girl I had met that was bisexual. And, and, I remember uh, that song. Right, and it's the song sucked. The song sucked so bad, and I came back home, and she was like, let me hear it. And I was like, I don't know if you want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, let me hear it. And I played it for her, and she was like, she was like, okay, I got some notes for you, but I'm going to start off with saying, this song ain't it. <laughs> I was like, okay. I, I was like, you're right, you're right. I was just having fun. And she was like, yeah, it sounds like you having fun. So I was is like, that a, did, did you record that record in Atlanta? Or was that New yeah, Jersey? That was in Atlanta. That was in Atlanta. That was when, they lived, yeah. when they lived in Alpharetta. Okay, okay. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's when we was all together then. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, she was she was good people, man. She was good people. It, it, funny stories, it, it's like trying to come up with funny stories about her is, is tough because it was more like you had to be in the room because she was just a funny person. Right. You know what I mean? But telling you a, a, a story about something funny that happened with right. her, I don't know. I, I don't I don't have too many. You got any um any good ma and pop memories? Oh, brother. I believed in Santa Claus my whole life up until I was at Ma's house in Boston. And uh, my whole life, I was probably like, I was probably like nine, probably like nine or 10. And it was a snowy day. I was sleeping on the top bunk. Um, uh, it was me, little T, Hakeem, no, uh, me, little T, Hakeem, Jerry, you. Uh, we were in different rooms. Um, I was hungry. I was hungry. I, I was like, what I house this was? I wonder if this was. It was a house in Boston. It was something. It was maybe it wasn't even a house. I, I don't. I don't really remember that well. But I. I remember what you said you wanted for Christmas. What you wanted for Christmas was an MC Hammer doll. Okay. Yeah. And I remembered that because I was like. I was like, man, that, that must be the coolest goddamn dog. Why is he? Why does he want an MC Hammer dog? What does it do? I want some Ninja Turtle shit, right? So I got hungry in the middle of the night, laying in bed. I couldn't sleep. I was starving, but I knew, I knew there was some leftover chicken in the kitchen. I knew that shit. I was about to go eat all that shit while <laughs> while I was asleep. So I went in the kitchen. They were wrapping fucking presents, and then, like, first I wasn't as shocked until I saw them wrapping. An MC Hammer doll. And I was like, Santa Claus ain't real. That's fucked up. Unless Ma is Santa Claus. That was my buddy, though. She treated me like a prince. Ruined your, ruined your whole Christmas, huh? Didn't ruin my Christmas. I just didn't believe in this fat white man dropping off gifts right. no more. So, I mean, you know, you know, hey, win win. Still not the Hammer doll was the shit, though, back then, cuz. Was it? <laughs> yeah. I hope he I hope he made money on that doll. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure he got rich as hell off that MC Hammer dog, though, though. I hope he did. I hope I'm he pretty, did. Yeah, I know he got rich as hell off that MC Hammer dog. Spent all his money and was like, oh, I'm still getting these MC Hammer dog checks. Thank God. For real, for real. So, cuz, so name, uh, we down. We got, we got nine minutes, man. Give me, uh, three of your favorite artists, man. Three of my favorite artists, man. That's tough. That's tough because I know so many good ones. Uh, artists that are uh, uh, out and uh, and and, and uh, major artists. Yeah, like okay. three artists you looked up to. Three artists I looked up to. That's different than three artists I I, I, I like. Um, okay, well, three I, artists you like. You ain't got to necessarily look up to them, but three artists that you like. Damn. Okay, that's the goat. I I'll give you three and three. I'll give you three and three artists I looked up to. Music Soul Child. Craig David, uh, Stevie Wonder, artists I looked up to. Um, um, I, I, I liked to listen to Glenn Lewis for a while, but Glenn Lewis sounded like Stevie Wonder, so I was like, I'm just listening to Stevie Wonder. Um, <laughs> and Glenn Lewis was an asshole when I met him, so. Three artists I like, Mario is the GOAT. Mario is the GOAT. Mario is the GOAT. Uh, uh, Lucky Day. Mario, Lucky Day, and um, her. Okay, I gotta Mario check it out. Lucky I gotta Day. check out Lucky Day. Oh, you haven't listened to Lucky Day? Uh uh-uh. uh Oh, brother. Yeah, I gotta. I gotta. That's is that a that's a dude or a, a female? Lucky Day is a dude. Yeah, Lucky Day okay. is a dude from the south. I gotta he check has him a song out. called. He has a song called Over and Over. Okay. And he has another song called Love You Too Much. Okay. I'd encourage you to listen to both of those. But if you feel a little impatient on the song Love You Too Much, the intro is a, like a minute 30 seconds. So you got to skip into the song. Okay. Uh, the intro is pretty long, but it's a good intro too. Um, but Mario is the go. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mario, bro. You, did you, how'd you feel about the uh, Mario and Omarion versus? I was, I was, I was greatly disappointed. I was greatly disappointed, but at the same time, I was kind of happy for the the world to be able to witness, like, like I want I wanted to just see the face of hard critics, like people that are like, oh man, this person is amazing. I wanted to see their face when they saw that this was a lot of auto tune. You know what I mean? Right. There's a there's a difference between raw talent and studio talent. You know what I'm saying? There's some people right. are really really dope in the studio because they know how to work their voice in the booth. Right. And there's other people that are dope as fuck, regardless. It don't matter, it's niggas dope. <laughs> right. Yeah, and so, that person definitely showed both sides. Yeah, 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 it did. Definitely showed both sides. <laughs> yeah, it did. I have to say, I wanted, to, I wanted to, man, I just wish, I wish I had more of, the, of a voice to the world to be able to tell motherfuckers like, y'all slept on Sammy. Y'all been sleep on Sammy. He was he killed it. He was doing a great job. Uh, yeah, Sammy, Sammy definitely did his thing. How'd you feel about uh how'd you feel about Ray J's performance? You know what? Because of my past with Ray J, I don't want to say anything negative about him at all. I'm trying to be a better Christian. I'm trying to be a better man <laughs> and not have harsh feelings towards anybody. Right. Uh, so, you know, I'm pretty sure he knows how he did. You know what I mean? And I'm not the greatest performer in the world, so I can't talk about anybody else's performances. I will say that Mario did an excellent job. Omarion is an excellent performer. Um, I was I, I was a little conflicted when he started eating watermelon on stage. Right. Yeah, he he lost me there too. That's what he wanted to do. He was he was hungry. <laughs> Who do you think is a better dancer? Omarion or Chris Brown? Shit, that's tough. I want to say Chris Brown. I want to say Chris Brown, but I think that the way you look when you're dancing not only has to do with, not that I'm a dancer, not that I'm a dancer, but just from the perspective of just a normal, a normal individual. When you look at somebody dancing, I think the way they're shaped, how tall they are, how, how big or not they are, I think that changes the look of how you dance. Your dance moves look different. If you watch Chris Brown dance, dude is tall and lanky, right? He's not buff. Dude is lightweight, but the way he moves is dope. I mean, he has right. moves, he has crazy moves, right? It looks looks dope. Omarion's right. an amazing dancer, but he's not as tall and lanky, right? So right. it just looks different. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I think they're both equally dope. 
Is there a versus that you would like to see? A versus I would like to see. Um, a versus that I would like to see. The verses are people from the people from the back in the day, right? It's not anybody current. Uh, yeah, basically. I would like to see a versus between whoo, Lauren Hill, and not that she would have to do that because she don't, she would never have to do it. She ain't got to do nothing like that, man. She's right. just she's just dope. Just live on your pedestal, girl. Um, but if I could have it, I would see a, a versus between Lauren Hill and. Um, Aaliyah. Woo! That would be crazy. That would be crazy. I mean, Lauren Hill doesn't dance. So it would be, I mean, but still, man, that would be a dope versus, right? Lauren Hill and Aaliyah, rest in peace? Yeah, man, that would be dope, man. Rest in peace. That would be dope. That would be my ultimate versus. Yeah, that, that, that's, 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 that's interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. But yeah, cuz we're gonna definitely do a part two, man. We definitely gonna uh pick up where we left off. Thank you, my dear. We down to uh our last couple of minutes, man. I appreciate you coming on with me, man. Say hey, hi to your cousin. Good. That's your cousin Shane. Hey, you say hi. <laughs> that is your cousin. No, my cousin. Oh my god. <laughs> That's my cousin. And because he's my cousin, he's your cousin. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> my, you have a lot of cousins. You have a lot of cousins. Right, you got a whole lot of cousins. You got a lot of cousins, girl. Cause we gotta get we gotta get I our kids not. together, man. Don't do that. Okay. Don't. Oh, okay. Okay. Go on. Close the door. Yeah, we gotta we gotta get our kids together soon. I agree. I want them to be able to have the level of connection that you and I have. Right. I don't know if anybody knows this, but one of my favorite people in the world and one of the closest people that I have in my entire family is this man right here. Close like one of the people I got. You know what I mean? Uh, I know if all the shit hits the fan, I know who I can turn to. Right. I love you, man. I love, I love you too. Yes, sir. We definitely gonna do a part two, cuz um I'm gonna put this out later on today and we're gonna we gonna we gonna get back to it. Okay, let me know. Next time we talk, man, I'm gonna give you a hard way to go. I'm gonna give you a hard time. Yeah, hey, we can we can uh, uh questions back at you. Yeah, that's that's what I want you to do. I wanted you to shoot some back at me this time. But well, we okay. definitely gonna do it. We this this part two, yeah. I'm ready. We can do it. Uh, we can we can we can do it whenever you're ready. Later on tonight, or even even tomorrow. It's up to you. You let me know. I'm, I'm game. Whenever you're available, just let me know. All okay. right, let's do it. All right, y'all. Thanks for tuning in, man. Till next time, I'll see y'all. Make sure y'all subscribe. Hit the like button. Comment any questions y'all got that y'all want us to answer on the next video. Just drop them below. We gonna answer them. It's nothing. Uh, I'm doing a $200 giveaway as soon as I get to 200 subscribers. So get me to the 200. I'm 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 real close. I'm real close. So as soon as I get there, I'm giving away 200, and we're going to keep doing these giveaways just like that. Till next time, man. Thank you, Landon. I love you, bro. I love you, too. I'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir. I'm going to call you in a minute. All right.